Hang on a second, he's getting angry. You need to do something. Kick him where it hurts. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. That's like the cell's balls, right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Parasite in Love. This is a yandere visual novel in which the parasite in your brain falls in love with you. Let's get started. A rare infection from a brain-eating amoeba is being blamed for the death of a North Carolina man who was swimming in a water park earlier this month. The amoeba is usually found in shallow freshwater. It can cause severe headaches, fever, nausea, and vomiting, which can progress into having a stiff neck, seizures, and a coma. It's only infectious when water is forced up the nose during activities such as diving and water ski. Yet another reason to not go outside. According to the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, the amoeba is rare but overwhelmingly deadly. It also kind of looks like a fried egg. In the last 57 years, there have only been 145 known infections, but of those, only 4 survived. The CDC says the illness is particularly difficult to treat because it is notoriously hard to detect and progresses so quickly. The next time you go swimming, wear a nose plug and avoid activities that involve being fully submerged in freshwater areas. Oh, you will not catch me swimming in freshwater in Australia. I will get eaten by a crocodile or I will step on a freshwater stonefish and cry. This is Gabe Stewart, NBS News. Day 1. You feel a rush of happiness as you continue your hike because you hear nothing but nature around you. The birds are chirping, the wind is rustling through the tree branches and the water is trickling nearby. It's so peaceful compared to your busy office that, that is currently far far away from you. The hundreds of emails you get as a project manager can wait until you return from your vacation. Neat! You finally arrive at the lake. The photos you looked through online couldn't convey the beauty of this place. You're so glad to stop here before entering the cabin you rented for your little vacation. Time to swim as a reward! The hours you spent hiking made your dip in the water all the more refreshing. Waves of relief wash over you as you swim around. And after a while, you let yourself float to enjoy the moment. You close your eyes and your breathing slows. The sun heats up your face while the water cools your back. You hear a scream and a wave pushes you to the side. You stabilize yourself, coughing and spluttering for air, trying to clear water from your mouth and nose. A boy laughs as he bobs up right next to you. It's always kids! He smiles brightly without a care in the world. Be careful, you could have hurt us both. But nothing happened. His mother calls for him and he swims away. As he steps out of the water, his mother already has a towel in his hair and dries his hair. You're a little envious. Clumsy with your words outside of work, you have a hard time connecting more with the people you love. Your friends and family do like to spend time with you, but you sometimes feel lacking when you try to show them the same affection. Perhaps you would have an easier time if you had a family of your own. Your friend did tell you that her instincts as a new mother help immensely when taking care of a baby. Yeah, this is why we're going to play this game, because an amoeba is going to get my brain pregnant. You hope that in your case, the instinct would take over in talking to your child. Why is my cat on the floor? Hello? Hey, Papa. There you are. You hope that in your case, the instinct would take over in talking to your child. How great would it be to have such a deep connection? You sigh and rise from the lake. You arrive in the cabin you are booked for the next two weeks. The space is too big for just one person, but it also feels luxurious to have so much space for yourself. You're basically checking this place out as a vacation home for the future family that you've always dreamed of. Even if you don't have a partner, the thought of taking a trip together fills you with joy. By the fireplace, you look at the couches where you could snuggle with your future family. You smile, imagining your child imitating a bear as they wear the fur that drapes over one of the cushions. You stretch your arms as you yawn, time to unpack and get settled. You put your hand into your bag and take out your vacuum sealed clothes. You pack them this way to make space for the other things. Your wallet, smartphone, food, toileries, and some books to pass the time. After putting all your stuff away, you go and take a shower. Half an hour later, you leave the bathroom feeling refreshed and donning a white robe provided by the rental. Walking to the couches with a grin and a glass of white wine. Now this feels like a true vacation. You take your phone out and check it out of habit from your job. Alright, let's check my messages. You have messages from your dad, mom, co-workers and friends. I have friends. Your dad always sends short messages like cloud with a photo of the sky attached. You must have inherited his blunt way with words. Let's check the message from my mom. Marlo, when are you coming home? You can't just leave for months, my dear, but you need some fresh vegetables from our garden too. She likes to nag and remind you to do things. Even though it's been years since you moved out, it can be annoying, but you know she's doing it with love. Coworker. Have you seen my last email? Fuck off, I'm on vacation. Friend. So, when are we going on our trip? We've been trying to organize this for years. Let's at least try to make plans by the end of the year. You sigh. It's gotten so much harder to meet up since your friend group became adults. Yeah. Day 2. Has the amoeba taken root in my brain yet? The sun warms your cheek and birds chirp as you wake up. What a peaceful morning. It's been a while since you've slept this well. 
You check your phone and notice that you've gotten a message from your dad. Pretty flower. Attaches a photo of a flower he saw on his way to work. It brightens your day whenever he does this. You want to send him a photo back. So you decide that today you'll explore your surroundings, take pictures and make some bookmarks with the flowers you find. After a quick breakfast, shower and change of clothes, you're ready. Once you're outside, you take a deep breath. You can smell damp moss, flowers and wet grass. It must have rained a little during the night. You take your smartphone out and start your hike. Your shoes sink in every time you take a step on the pine needle covered ground. As you look around, the wind caresses the leaves above you, making their shadows dance on the ground. Soon, you spot some small purple flowers growing nestled between fallen tree trunks. You squat down and take a picture up close. You stare profoundly at your photo. A dewdrop on one of the petals reflects the sunlight, making the scene feel more magical. You stand up and send it to your dad, or at least you try to. You see your bad reception and give it another attempt but it doesn't go through. You decide to send it once you have a better connection in the cabin. Then you look at the flowers again. Upon further thought, they would be pretty they would be a pretty decoration for a bookmark when dried. You carefully pick one and make your way back. After you put your bag away, you fold a sheet of paper around the flower and tuck it inside a book. You press the book shut and then stack several more books on top of it. That should make it flat and dried after a while. Then you remember to send the photo. Your dad just answers with nice. And seconds later he sends a photo back. New wooden toy. You chuckle. You used to make them together when you were younger. That's really cute though. I miss you dad. You shake your head a little embarrassed after those words escape your mouth. Somehow you can't bring yourself to send those words. You just write nice back. After a long bubble bath you're ready to prepare your dinner. You cut the meat on the chopping board almost in a rhythmic fashion. After a while of eating only takeout it feels good to cook for yourself again. <laughs> what the fuck? Are you cooking? It looks good. You let go of your knife too fast and it clatters onto the counter. You whip your head around. No one was there but you clearly heard a voice. Slowly you move around the cabin, peeking into each corridor but you found no sign of anyone else in the house. Still anxious, you go back to the kitchen. You start the stove and sear the meat in the pan. The fat glistens and the smell makes your mouth water. You almost forget the previous strange incident. Hungry and impatient, you grab a fork and tear into the meat. It's still rare and a little bloody. You enjoy the flavor and relax, feeling the stress from earlier leave your body, putting the odd incident behind you. You were still able to find some enjoyment today. The morning alarm almost gives you a heart attack. With half shut eyes, you search for your phone and hastily turn off the alarm. You sit up and massage your temples. It's been a while since you had a headache this bad. Sluggishly, you crawl out of bed and make your way to the kitchen. You brew some tea in hopes that it will help and take it with you to the living room. Are you feeling off because of the hiking you did? Or was it the rare meat? No, it's the amoeba putting its ussy into your brain! Several hours later. Man, what did I do to that toilet? Did I destroy it? There's even like a boot print on the side. What did I do? Step on the toilet and squat right on top of it and poop directly into it? You breathe heavily as you lean against the cold white ceramic on the toilet. I hope I'm not leaning against this. Look at it. It's, it's freaking destroyed. It's like the eruption of Mount Vesuvius happened, except it came from it came out of my butt. The last time you had to vomit was after the last office party after securing a multi-million dollar deal for the company. Constant flow of alcohol was the only thing making the loud music bearable. But the next morning, you had the hangover from hell. You can't remember much else. Check the kitchen for bad food. You know you bought the food just before your hike, but you can't help but suspect that something you ate might have gone bad. No, not the bread or anything in the kitchen, it's all fresh. Was it really food poisoning? Could it be some suppressed stress from work finally resurfacing? Or was it too much sun after being holed up in an office for so long? You grab your phone and sit down on the couch. You decide to research some more on your phone and open your browser in order to look up your symptoms. Uh, what do I type? Brain hurt. You're not sure why you type that. I'm not, I'm not sure either. Um, hurt to the men. You're not sure why you type that. Yeah, maybe you should call a doctor now. Just when you're about to type in a number, your hand seizes up, your phone falls onto the couch. What was that? You hesitate. You dropped your phone from a little muscle cramp. You've had those before. Whatever bug you've caught will probably pass by tomorrow morning. You get yourself some tea, a slice of toast, and rest for the day. Day 5. Something's going wrong. Something's going wrong and I don't like it. You sleep through an entire day but you still feel weak when you wake up. You drink some tea and wonder if you should at least eat something. But you decide it'll probably be better to wait it out until tomorrow and give your stomach more time to rest. It'd be a waste of food if you had to throw up again. You drag yourself to the fireplace and make a fire. 
You make yourself comfortable on the couch as you watch the flames. They sway from left to right, and if you aren't careful, you could get lost in their hypnotic dance. You start to feel lonely, even as you enjoy looking at the flames. You miss your mother's chicken soup that she cooked whenever you got sick. You snuggle even deeper into the blankets. Why did you have to get sick all alone out in the woods? Oh my god, for a second there I thought there was like a black light lighting up the walls and somebody had left a residuals on the walls. Your mind drifts off and you look around the room in a daze. Is the room getting bigger? Maybe you just imagined it. It's alright. I'm here. You force yourself up and seize the fireplace poker, brandishing it in front of you while you search for the source of the voice. You could have sworn it was right next to you, but there's no one else in the room. After what happened the other day, you've checked just as much. Of course, you're the only one here, right? You back into a corner so at least you aren't ambushed from behind. You take out your phone and try to call for help. No. What the f- An intense pain wells up in your head. You jolt in pain and let go of your phone. It hits the ground, bounces once, then falls flat. You tremble as you kneel down to retrieve it, and sigh when you see that your phone is still intact. Okay. Whatever just made its presence known seems like it doesn't want you to call for help. You don't care. Your thumb hovers over the dial pad, you're gonna make that call. Call the police. That won't help. You nearly throw your phone out of fear, but you stop yourself in time. You only feel a little pain. Tears roll down your cheeks, you hate this voice, it's swimming in your head, it's seizing up your hand, it's like it's controlling you. No. Now you sound delusional. What voice? You mean thinking, right? That's just what everyone does, you just... Fighting your own intuition, aren't you? Close your phone and just go to bed. You hope this ends soon. Okay, my bed looks terrible. Day 6. When you open your eyes, you're not sure what you're looking at. Colors? Patterns? Why can't you focus? <laughs> Good morning. Oh shit, it's here! Why does it look like blue Heisei Sasaki? <laughs> Panic floods your body. There, at the foot of your bed, grins a ghoulishly colored man. Who is he? How did he break in? You snatch a nearby pillow and throw it at the intruder, but it sails right through him. You stare in sheer disbelief. Uh, are you... a ghost? No, no. I'm a living being. We met in the lake. I was looking for a place to multiply, and you were just so warm and so nourishing I couldn't resist. So am I pregnant in the brain or were you pregnant? And finally, you can see me. He leans forward. Hi, I'm an amoeba. I think you humans call me Nyaglaria Fileri? So I'm starting to see things. I need help. Wait, are you getting a doctor? Of course. So you're trying to get rid of me. Wait, hang on a second, he's getting angry. You need to do something. Kick him, fight him, kick him where it hurts. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell or something, something. That's his weak point, right? That's like, that's like the cell's balls, right? <laughs> what am I doing? Oh. You feel intense pain as a new wave sends you into agony. Listen here, you weirdo. How could you? We need to stay together, don't you understand? Okay, okay, wait, please, calm down. I won't do it. Good. The pain disappears, you feel even weaker than before. Exhausted, you lay back down on the bed. He's an amoeba. He's in your head. And he's sprouted more and more of him to root around in your brain. You know what, not the kind of root that I expected, but I guess I can take what I can get because it doesn't seem like I have much friends. And the pain is killing you, killing you. So, wait, aren't I just gonna die? He doesn't answer immediately. Don't say it like that, Marlo. Isn't it wonderful that we get to spend time together? You have a hard time wrapping your head around the situation. But what you do know is you're in bad shape and this thing won't let you call for help. Did it have to be me? Wasn't there a better place for you? No, never. Well, of course, it's rare for my kind to infect humans. But I see it as a sign. And you know what I saw when I got closer to your brain? You wish for a family, Marlo. It's as strong as mine. Yeah, but now I'm pregnant in the- now I'm pregnant in the brain. He comes closer and puts his head on your stomach. This is where a baby would grow, right? Hey, yo, that's a bit freaky. Why, is, why does he want to get me pregnant? He breathes in deeply. This is how a fetus in the womb feels. Why would they ever even leave their mother's body? Alright, getting weirder. It's so warm and comforting inside you humans. Hey, whoa, hang on a second. A shudder runs through your body. You want to hit him and push him away even though you know your hands would phase through him. To make this new family arrangement easier for you, I'll even let you call me Niall. 
like your unrequited love from your university days. You can dig into your memories. I can offer you everything you couldn't have, but always wanted. Why are you frowning? Not happy? You put on your poker face. Who would have thought that your days with dealing with rude stakeholders would come in handy for something like this? Uh, no, it sounds good. Really good, right? But suddenly his smile fades, he stands up and looks at you with worry. You're getting weaker, and you're enjoying yourself so much too. It made me smile. What was that drink you had? White wine? Yeah? I wish I could drink it with you. It's something you humans do with each other, right? Well, I guess we'll just have to take what we can. Is there something we could do together? Oh, how about I sit with you at the dinner table? Is this him playing house with you? Why should I play house with someone like you? What? Why do you have to be so rude about it? He comes closer and sits on the bed. Slowly, he caresses your face. Do we already have to talk about how we should communicate? I just... your throat closes. My presence seems to have this effect on you. How about we stay calm? Alright? You nod. Your throat opens up and you immediately cough and gasp for air. Shh. It's alright. It's alright. Now, let's go to the dining table, alright? You need your breakfast after all. You walk to the kitchen while Niall follows you. You can feel his gaze on you. Your hand reaches from the pantry but Niall interrupts you. You can't just eat bread alone. You're already weak. How about something more filling? I will also try to lessen the nausea, so... Please? For us? You clench your fist. That's rich coming from him. You turn to the fridge and take out some eggs. You, you're fine if I make some scrambled eggs, right? Yeah, that sounds better. The pain and nausea have truly lessened. Seems like if you humor him, you can at least keep your head clear enough to think. You hear Niall hum as you crack open some eggs and turn on the stove. Curiosity gets the better of you and you glance at him as the eggs sizzle. He sits on a chair waiting at the dining table, swaying left and right, happily waiting for you to finish cooking. What is this madness? This peaceful scene unnerves you more than anything, but you play along for now. After you choke some bites down, he leans forward in excitement. It tastes better with some company, right? Uh, I guess so. I guess you're still tired. I'm a little sad you're not as excited as I am. Sorry, maybe I should be more patient until you get used to all this. Then he lets you eat in peace until you're finished. You clean up and begin to fidget as you're not sure how Niall wants to continue the day. Suddenly, you get goosebumps and slump down. You heave, a wave of nausea surging through you. Oh no! I thought I could give you more time. He reaches for your arm but it goes right through. I wish I could help you stand. After a few seconds, your nausea dissipates. How can you survive this situation? What should you do? Is there a way to get rid of him? Let's get back to bed. Alright? You both shuffle back to the bedroom. You lay down in bed and Niall sits down beside you. He strokes your hair as you gradually fall asleep. I am so screwed! Day 7. You hardly slept and still feel weak. Your neck is stiff and weird colours again appear right before your eyes. Oh, you're awake. Good morning, dear. He's everywhere! Oh god! Oh god, he's covered in mitosis! You turn your head and see multiple Niles next to the bed. You suppress the urge to scream. Yeah, I wanted to show you what our children inside you look like. Oh god, I'm pregnant! There's even one that looks like you. Ah, yeah. I'm offended! I don't- what the f- Hey! I don't look like that! He puts a blob of blue mass on your lap. The way it gurgles and cries, it sounds desperately like a human baby. It coughs and some blue spit runs down its cheek. Isn't it cute? No! What? Don't call this a baby. You don't have to look at it like it's vermin. You turn around and hide inside your blankets. Leave me alone, I beg you. At least for a bit, okay? Just go eat something later, okay? Then, silence. After a few hours, you reluctantly sit up. Your grumbling stomach won't shut up. While you walk to the kitchen, you assess your situation and try to think of a plan. Niall won't let you call a doctor, nor other help. He loves acting like a husband to you. If you humor him, he will try to lessen the effects of the infection. But if he stays, you'll certainly die. Right in the kitchen, Niall shows himself. 
So you have enough strength to eat now. Great, get out of here. How do I get out of? Is there a, is there a way to somehow use his fixation on my family against him? A slight headache interrupts your thoughts. What are you thinking so hard about? It's like something is moving around inside your head. What are you doing? I just want to know what you're thinking. You try your hardest to think of something positive about Niall. You can't risk him seeing what you truly think. If only you didn't exist. You're really cruel. It hurts, Marlo. It hurts that you think of me this way. I'm really trying here. Then get out of my head! Leave! I think I need some space. Then he disappears. Anxious about the way he left, you eat something and drink some tea. At least the nausea hasn't set in again. Should you just run out of the house? Could you chance the woods and find somebody to help? You hurry towards the front door. Where are you going? Of course, he's still here. Maybe you would like to take a walk with me? Marlo, you're weak. What are we gonna do if you collapse outside? Go to bed. Now. I can still walk around at least. Marlo. A wave of pain spreads through your head. I'm begging you for your own sake. Your head pounds and forces you to your knees. Good. The pain stops. As a tear rolls down your cheek, you go back to bed. You pray that tomorrow you find the strength to defy him. Day 9. You wake up in your weakest state yet, your skull feels full and ready to burst. Your heavy limbs struggle to move on command. Your breathing is dry and ragged and you're attacked by shivers from a sweltering fever. You don't have much time left. You steal yourself and decide that you have to push through no matter how upset he gets. But you have to at least try. In your dizzy state, you look up and there he is. Good morning. You wish dearly that he would just leave your body. He acts like a husband and wants to be a father with a disgusting display of a fake family. Wait, a father? Niall, I have a question. Yes? He strokes your hair as he speaks, how you wish you could smack his hand away. Why do you want to be a father? Well, I sort of already am, right? I believe I'm pretty good at it. You could never be a good father. You're just an amoeba. You just multiply and copy yourself. You don't care about children. What are you talking about? Your head hurts, but you don't care at this point. As if you know. Oh, I do know. Question is how to show it to him. You haven't really moved much. Are you too weak to stand up today? Is it too hard to even talk now? How about I dig deeper and see for myself? You feel something pushing and pulling inside your head. Show your memory of your university crush. Show him you long for something real and not whatever Niall is trying to be. You remember the real Niall smiling. You loved his sarcastic humor, how easily he offered his help and how soft his voice was when he had to calm you down. Despicable. Is that it? You want something more real, a human who never loved you back in the end. You deserve better, Marlo. But I guess you don't believe that's me. I can't take this. He disappears. You hope he's gone completely, but you fear that's not the case. Day 10. When you open your eyes, Niall looms over you. Or at least you believe it's him. Yeah, yeah? His voice is cold. Gone is every ounce of affection he had ever expressed before. Your body stiffens in panic as fear overtakes you. You want to move, you want to run, but your body doesn't listen. You can only shake before him like a fawn before a wolf. Niall sighs. I really, really wanted to believe you. I was hopeful, you know? It's so rare my kind gets to be with you humans. Yes, there's a reason for that. You're killing me. So I thought we were special. No, we're not. I thought I could build a home with you. A family full of love. He grabs your wrist and pulls you up. But you just couldn't accept me. You had to treat me like vermin. And even went so far as wanting to get rid of me. He rubs his head into the back of yours. Just why did my love not reach you? I am sure I expressed it a lot. Surely you know how much I want a family like you. Just where did we go wrong? Uh, from, the, from the beginning, when you infected me. For a moment, disgust is all you can feel. The hypocrisy, the denial, the sheer audacity of all the nonsense he's talking about makes bile rise in your throat. And then, his voice breaks. Marlo, I can't help but still hold you dear to my heart. Okay, we'll stop. You know, because I can look into your memories and thoughts sometimes, I know how much genuine love you have for the family you want. You imagined your child, 
running around in this very cabin. Right? I wish I could have been the father of that lovely child. Your throat closes. The more desperately you guess for air, the more searing the pain is in your throat. I'm dying. This sucks. Marlo? Wait. I still have things to say. Well, too bad. You killed me. This is not what I wanted. I wanted to see you smile. But I could not control my anger. And now... I'm so sorry, Marlo. But don't worry. I will follow you soon. Man, I just had to go home and talk to my dad and said, Oh, dear lord. We are looking kind of biblical there. Oh no. Well, I, I died. Alright, let's try and get some of the other endings. Alright, this time we're going to be real nice to him. Of course, my dear. You shovel the disgust you feel as fear has pushed you to say this phrase. Now blinks in surprise. Then he smiles at you in pure bliss. Oh god, now I'm all flustered. Let's go then. After you. You walk to the kitchen while Nile follows. You can still feel his gaze on you. Your hand reaches for the pantry but Nile interrupts you. You can't just eat bread alone. You're already weak. Now that's something more filling. I'll also try to lessen the nausea, so please. For us? You clench your fist, that's rich coming from here. Nile sits on a chair at the dining table. Swaying left and right, happily waiting for you to finish cooking. What is this madness? This peaceful scene unnerves you more than anything, but you play along for now. After you choke some bites down, it leans forward in excitement. It tastes better with company, right? Um, absolutely. You're really sweet, too. <laughs> he continues to hum. I'm happy there are at least some things we can do together. What else? Oh, is it possible for us to watch something together later? I saw glimpses of, what was it? Movie dates in your memory? My phone's a little small for us to watch something together. Oh, okay. With mixed feeling, you turn back to your plate, thankful he at least lets you eat in peace until you're finished. You clean up and begin to fidget as you're not sure how Naya wants to continue the day. Suddenly you get goosebumps and slump down, a wave of nausea surging through you. Oh no, I thought I could give you more time. I wish I could help you stand. How can you survive this situation? What should you do? Is there a way to get rid of him? Let's get back to bed, alright? Oh, you're awake. Good morning, my dear. Okay, this is where he shows us the baby. And this time I have to accept this lump of flesh. It's absolutely precious. You try to hug it, but you can't touch it. You're desperate to make him happy. I'm so glad you like it. It's our family after all. He takes the baby back. Come get breakfast once you're ready. You seem weaker today, so I'll stay silent while you sleep a bit more, alright? You nod and lay down. After a few hours, you reluctantly sit up. Your grumbling stomach won't shut up. While you walk to the kitchen, you assess your situation and try to think of a plan. Na won't let you call a doctor, no other help. He loves acting like a husband to you. If you humor him, he'll try to lessen the effects of the infection. But if he stays, you'll certainly die. And what are you thinking so hard about? It's like something is moving inside your head. What are you doing? I just want to know what you're thinking. You try your hardest to think of something positive about Niall. You can't risk him seeing what you truly think. A lovely day to spend with my Niall. Oh, you charmer. He sounds absolutely delighted. The headache disappears and you sigh in relief. I think somewhere in your memories it said a little caffeine helps when you have a headache. Yeah, coffee sounds great right now. You put a kettle on and shake some instant coffee into your mug. Then you take a yogurt cup from the fridge and get a spoon. Niall's eyes glimmer with excitement as if he expects you to do some magic tricks. Is yogurt good? Y yeah, it's sweet and cold and refreshing. After a while you start to play with your spoon. Maybe it's better if you only eat a bit, you don't want to upset your stomach. Come on, eat a little more. We have more mouths to feed after all. Oh yeah, I forgot I'm pregnant. The reminder makes you drop your spoon. What's wrong? Him. Everything about him and what he does. You stare at him with wide open eyes. You bite down hard on your lip to hold yourself back from giving him a piece of your mind. Are you angry? No, no, I know you're just worried. Well, we both want you to be healthy, right? So I'm allowed to be worried about you, right? Sure. This is a nightmare. When the water is ready, you pour some into your mug. After adding some milk, you mix the coffee and drink it. Do you feel a little better? Yes. 
There's palpable tension between you two. Nam makes the first move, putting his hand on yours. Here. Yeah. This might cheer you up. You see blue shapes glow and dance in the space between your hands. Do you like it? You slowly nod. Oddly, this beautiful dance of colours comforts you. It pains you that he seems to care despite being the cause of your suffering. Do you want to spend some time together in the living room? Maybe watch the fire in the fireplace? Niall sighs. Maybe sleep will help. I hope we can do something together tomorrow, Marlo. Now, let's go. He walks beside you as you go back to your bedroom. Tomorrow, you have to get it together. No matter what it takes. Day 9. Oh yeah, this is the day where I feel like even worse. And then you ask him here about being a dad, and then you say, Yes, you're a wonderful father, Niall. Thank you, Marlo. I'm so glad you think so too. We're a wonderful family. He gives you a kiss on your forehead, but no lips touch your skin, only a tingling flare of heat. He's just an imaginary husband after all. You haven't really moved much. Are you too weak to stand up today? Is it even too hard to talk now? How about I dig deeper and see for myself? You feel something pushing and pulling inside your head. I'll show you a memory of a relative who was struggling before their death. Maybe Niall will show you mercy, you're just exhausted at this point. Marlo, are you this tired? You nod. I beg you, make the pain stop. Niall looks over you with worry, pacing around the room, chewing a fingernail. How about... He puts a hand on your forehead. Does this make you feel better? No, it doesn't! No, what are you trying to do? I saw a glimpse of your memory of once when you were little. I believe your mother did this for you when you were sick. Silly you, I had a fever then. Not an infection. I mean, a fever is a response to an infection. Guilt flashes across his face. But he shakes his head and affection returns to his gaze. I will think of a way. For now, sleep, my dear. With the last of your energy spent, you drift off into a deep slumber. Day 10. Alright, ending time. Your breathing is shallow as you wake up in bed. Curtains dance in front of your eyes and you hear Niall humming. You know he's not real, but you still feel his warmth next to you. Is it comforting? Are you scared? It doesn't matter anymore. All you know is that you're experiencing him. Hey yo. Hope is gone from your mind. You can't tell illusions from reality anymore. You turn your head towards Niall to try and focus your eyes on him. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. He reaches out to you and caresses your hair. You must have turned and tossed around a lot in your sleep. The bed sheets are like a veil on you. All right, listen to you, freak. Maybe this is the only way we can marry. Weirdo. I know we don't have a lot of time. I feel you getting weaker by the second. But don't worry. I am with you. Until death do us part. You feel him wrap you in his embrace. You never imagined that death would feel so warm. You slowly close your eyes as you hear Niall humming the wedding march. Is there an ending at all in which I survive? <laughs> Man! Alright, I'm gonna try and get the last two. Alright, now that we're back here... This is the third ending. I doubt you actually know what a great father is, Niall. Well, at least not in the human sense. I mean, how could you have learned if you had no one to teach you? Then tell me. Children take priority. You think I don't know that? How many of your decisions are for your own survival? How much of this is really for the survival of our children? Feels weird to say our children. Good, he's getting insecure. You haven't really moved much. Are you too weak to stand up today? Is it even too hard to talk now? And I dig deeper and see for myself. You feel something pushing and pulling inside your head. Show a memory of your dad. Show him what a great example he is. This has to sway Niall's mind. You remember your father and his big calloused hands. He stood next to him, barely reaching his waist as you both worked on a wooden toy. He looked away for a second and you took that chance to use the grinding machine. After all, your father's always looked so cool when he used it. Just in time, he pulled you away, injuring his own hand, but he just smiled and laughed. Oh, my cheeky little angel. Don't ever do that again, alright? You're so cruel, Marlo. If, if I was a human, I could be the best husband you want. The best father for your children, but there's no way for me to follow his example. I can't even help you stand up. I'm just a small organism. I accidentally read that word incorrectly the first time I saw it. He looks completely broken. Sitting on the ground like a lost child. It's not just about strength, Niall. It's his compassion. The will to put his own children first no matter what happens to himself. And I know that we can do that for our children. Really? Yes. We didn't have to welcome death so early, Niall. What? How? If you stay inside me, I will die with you. I don't mind if it's with you. You bite down on your lip. 
Just continue, you got him right where you want him, he's listening. But we're also murdering our children that way. Niall, is that what a father does? Niall looks away. But what else are we supposed to do? We go back to the lake, you and our children can survive there. Hope sparkles in Niall's eyes, but that hope quickly gives way to sadness darkening his face. But what about you? We would have to be separated for some time, but that gives me time to recover, and then I can come back, and we can have more time together again. But that means you have to walk there and swim in the lake. You could drown. That's what I can do as a... You really don't want to say the next word. Mother. Ugh. A small sacrifice for our children. Tears form in Niall's eyes as he hugs you. The break of a cold sweat in place of his phantom touch. I'm scared, Marlo. What if I survive and you don't? Then take care of the children for me. That I only realize now that you truly love us. Thank you. Ugh. Sleep for now. While you sleep, I will try and lessen the symptoms and give you time to gather your strength for tomorrow. Finally, he agreed like you expected. You just hope your body can keep up tomorrow. You cling to that hope as you fall asleep. Day 10. You take a deep breath as you open your eyes. Now stands in the corner looking more. I can breathe a lot better today. He nods. You convinced me that we should try the lake, so... The least I can do is lessen the pain. But your body is still in bad shape. You will still see hallucinations, Marla. Are you sure you want to do this? You nod. This is the only way for us, now. Now comes closer and caresses your face. I wish I could carry you to the lake at least, but this is all I can do. Trying to lessen the effect and wishing for the best. You swallow back the insults you want to throw at him, at your murderer in front of you. Believe in us, now. You bite your lips before you continue. Believe in our love. You choke down the bitter aftertaste those words leave in your mouth. Yes, my love. I will. Now let me go to the lake, you weirdo. You drag your weakened body to the bathroom to wash your face and change your clothes. Then you enter the kitchen. After you force all that one bite of toast down your throat, you're finally ready to go out. Just as you were. Just days ago, you were so happy to hear birds chirping here. Now you have to try your best to not turn this into the last hike of your life. Although the colours are less aggressive than they've been for the past few days, you still see patterns dance in front of your eyes. The forest is changing in shape, and sometimes the sounds are piercing to your ears, but you force yourself to ignore it all and just continue walking. You are so brave, Marla. You suppress the urge to make snide remarks. I'm just doing what I think is needed. I know, but still, you could drown. Funny how he reminds you of that when he's already killing you with just his presence. No, try to think positively. I'm well aware of the risks, but this is the only way. The only way for me to survive. Yes. For me too, Niall. But only because he won't let you call the ambulance. How about our family? I will keep multiplying even there, Marlo. I will multiply and create our children this way. We do. I will take care of them so we can all enter your body once you come back. I'm going to bleach that lake. It will be the family we both wanted. And with even more time to spend with each other. Like you said, we don't have to welcome death so early. You do. I'm gonna pour like some sort of cleaner in the goddamn lake. But I am still worried. It is so rare that my kind infects you humans. So even when you come back. Don't worry, just believe in our love. It's truly a special one. It will overcome the odds. You will never return to this place, though. But Niall cannot know this. Were he to sense your deceit, he would unbury the truth in your mind. There we are. You reach for the nearest tree and lean against it. You have arrived at the lake where you got infected. To think you would come back here in order to survive. Be careful, dear. Take off your clothes and enter the water. Oh god! Get it out, get it out, get it out. I'm assuming something different happens if we fail this, right? You burn your wish to move into your limbs, but they only respond in small movements. Panic takes hold as you try not to sink. You hear Niall faintly through the water. Marlo! Marlo, please! Stay with me! This is far enough! I can go from here! As you try to stabilize yourself, you feel your body rapidly change in temperature. 
You scream in agony as your nerves bear burning fever and icy chills before you hack up the water you swallowed. After several excruciating moments, you can feel heat across your entire body. In a haze, you see tiny blue patterns leave your skin and disperse into the water. Seeing those tiny amoebas leave your body fills you with joy. Finally, you're free of him. But then a small spot on your hand doesn't move for a few moments. And you freeze and pray he hasn't heard your thoughts. Please come back to me, Marlo. No, get the hell off my hand! He hasn't discovered your plans at last. You give him a genuine smile. I will, in brackets lies. Please, if not for me, then for our children. Of course. I love you, Marlo. I always will. Alright, now get off my hand and sink into the water. Me too. How much bleach do I need for this lake? He whimpers in the broken voice as his last words. Goodbye, Marlo. Good riddance, I'm gonna stomp on Niall like Spongebob stomps on Plankton in the Spongebob movie. Goodbye, Niall. The blue colour fades and the heat along with it. You gather all your strength and swim to the lakeside. You can't help but move away as fast as possible out of fear it might reinfect you. As soon as you touch the earth, you crawl out and cry. You scream out all the fear and pain you had to endure. Tears fall and you can't stop yourself from falling apart. You can't even form the insults you wanted to scream. You're so empty, so utterly spent that your infection-ravaged body acting on sheer willpower alone is on the verge of collapse. The sense of relief washes over you. He's finally gone. Finally, you can return home. Yeah, I made it! Alright, I'm gonna fail at that AD spam. Well, here we are. Time to not do anything. Time to drown. Something something about taking my enemies down with me. Do -do 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 -do. Don't mind me, just drowning. Man, I sure am taking a while to drown. You become too weak. Your body no longer listens too ravaged by the infection. Gravity takes over, dragging you down into the lake. Oh, oh, no. oh, please. You gasp for air and water rushes into your lungs. The smile of your mother comes to your mind. How you wish you could be next to her and be in her comfort one last time. Mm -hmm. Your throat spasms in pain. Your lungs burn and your mouth opens to scream only to be drowned out by the unrelenting water. How long will it take your co-workers to worry about your absence? How long until they start looking for your body? Always. The pain is now so intense that it stabs you like a dozen of knives. You'll never be able to embrace the family you always wanted. Thank you. You gasp in a futile attempt for air again and again. Your thoughts begin to drift as your vision fades. You regret that you did not spend more time with your mother. You regret that you could never make any wooden toys with your father again. You regret not going on that trip with your friends. But more than anything, you wish you could have been given more time. Now nothing but regrets are left. Man! You know what? Screw you, Niall. This is all your fault. Go to hell. Well, that was Parasite in Love. I've been meaning to play this for a while because I know it's quite old, but I'm glad I finally experienced it. See, I'm actually like pretty scared of this particular parasite because it's like, it's not like common in Australia, but like there's been cases where it has infected people in stagnant freshwater. Not to mention that we've just got a lot of like really gross freshwater creatures hiding in general. So I was like, bleh. But thank you so much for experiencing this story with me. If you guys like this biologically horrifying experience, uh, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. And if you want to hang out outside of stream, I stream on Twitch four times a week. Feel free to come over and hang out with me in the community. But yeah, thank you so much again for sitting with me through this uh, experience. It was terrifying. You know, I feel like I can fight off monsters and demons and so on and so forth. In brackets, I am probably can't. Uh, but when it comes to bacterial infections, what do I do? It's so small and microscopic. Anyways, that's all for now. Thank you so much again, and until next time, take care.